Before we can write some Node.js code, we first need to install Node.js on our local development computer. The process of downloading and installing Node.js is actually the same for all operating systems. For this course, I am going to use Windows operating system, but on other operating systems like macOS or Linux, the process of downloading and installing Node.js is exactly the same. So let's head over to Node.js.org and from here, let's download and install Node.js on our local development machine. On this web page, you will see two buttons to download Node.js. And here you will also notice that the operating system of my machine has been automatically selected here. But if in your case, it has not selected the right operating system which you are using, then you can head over to Downloads page. And from here, you can download the installer based on your operating system. Alright, let's go back to the home page. Now, on this home page, we have two versions of Node.js which we can download. The LTS version, which stands for Long Term Support version, and the current version, which is basically the latest version. The LTS version is less frequently updated and it is more stable. So if you're using LTS version for your enterprise application, your application is more stable and less prone to any unwanted issues which might be caused with the latest updates. On the other hand, current version is frequently updated. For this course, I'm going to download and install LTS version, but you can also install the current version as well. Now, if you're watching this video in the far future, then at that time, another version of Node.js might already have been released. So here, you might see another version of Node.js and not the one which you are currently seeing on my machine. So here, this version might have been changed to 18 or 20 and the current version might have been changed to 20 or 22. And we can actually see the scheduled release timelines for the long-term support version. For that, you can click here and it will show you the scheduled release of long-term support version, the LTS version. For example, if you're watching this video in April of 2024, at that time, the LTS version will be Node.js 20. And if you are watching this video in Jan of 2023, at that time, the LTS version will be Node.js 18 and the current version will be Node.js 19. And keep in mind that you should only use the even version of Node.js for production projects. For example, version 16, 18, 20, etc. Because as you can see here, it is clearly mentioned that after every six months, odd numbered releases becomes unsupported. Okay, so you get support for odd numbered releases for six months. After that, it becomes unsupported. And that's why you should always use even number releases of Node.js for your production. And in case you're worrying that I'm using old version in this course, if you're watching this lecture in the future, then let me tell you that Node actually doesn't change that much. Most of the time, the new releases just have behind the scenes optimization and bug fixes. In terms of new features, Node does not change that much from one version to other version. Alright, so let's go ahead and let's download and install Node.js for our local development machine. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to download this long term support version. So for that, click on this button and it will start downloading the installer. Since I'm using Windows, it is going to download the MSI package. Once the download is complete, double click on this installer, this MSI package, and it will open the installation wizard. Here, click on this next button. Here, accept the end user license and click on the next button. Now here, at this path, Node.js will be installed. If you want to change this directory, you can click on this change button and you can select the directory where you want to install the Node.js. But here, I'm going to keep the default settings. Click on the next button. On this screen, you can select what are the features you want to be installed. Again, I'm going to keep the default settings and I will click on this next button. And again, click on this next button and click on install. And it will start installing Node.js on my local machine. Installation is complete. Click on this finish button. Now, just to check if the Node.js is properly installed on my machine or not. Here, I'm going to open command prompt. If you're using Mac OS, you can open terminal. And there, you can type this command node hyphen V. If I press enter, it should show us the version of Node.js installed on my machine. As you can see, it is showing this version. So currently, we have installed that version of Node.js, this 16.17.0. And that same version you will see here. And this simply means that Node.js is properly installed on my machine. Now, when you type this command, and if you don't see any number here, any version number, and if you see any error message, that means 
Node.js is not properly installed on your machine. In that case, you can try reinstalling Node.js. And since the Node.js is installed on my machine, now I can execute JavaScript code outside of the browser. To do that, all I have to do is I have to type node and execute this command. For that, I can press enter. And this command will start a node environment called REPL. And in there, I can type some JavaScript code and I can execute it. For example, if I go ahead and if I say 2 plus 2, this is a JavaScript expression. If I press enter, it is going to show us the result. If I say console.log and let's say I want to log hello world. If I press enter, okay, here we have an error. That's because I started this string with double quotes and I ended it with single quotes. So let me write this expression again and there let me use double quotes to end this string. Now, if I go ahead and if I press enter, you can see hello world has been logged here. In the same way, I can create a variable. Let's call it X. Let's assign it with the value 30. And if I go ahead and if I log X, it should log the value stored in that variable X. So here you can see I'm able to execute the JavaScript code in this command prompt. Here, I'm not executing this JavaScript code in browser. In the next lecture, let's learn about REPL and what it is in great detail. This is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.